ادعوا الى سبيل ربك بالحكمه والموعظه الحسنه وجادلهم بالتي هي احسن ان ربك هو اعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو اعلم بالمهتدين ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار brothers in islam we should always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be grateful to him that he has guided us to be Muslims and has guided us to be those who submit to him in Islam. This is one of the greatest blessings that a human being can be given while living here on the face of this earth. And another great blessing is that not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us, but He also provided for us guidance to live by here on this earth so that we can find the solutions for all of our problems, all of our hardships, and all of our difficulties that we face on a daily basis. So what a wise and knowledgeable and merciful and loving creator that we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. Many of us, my dearly beloved brothers, throughout our lives experience difficulties, problems, and hardships. Some of us, we cannot control our emotions or our feelings. And we sometimes find ourselves overwhelmed by our feelings or emotions. Some of us, we find ourselves having trouble controlling our desires and our physical lusts and our carnal desires of the flesh. Some of us find ourselves feeling miserable, feeling hopeless, feeling unsuccessful, and not knowing what direction to go in life. Sometimes we feel depressed. Sometimes we feel stressed out. And sad. If any of us have felt any of these ways, my dearly beloved brothers, what do we normally do? What type of medication do we go home and take? What type of medical specialist do we go to? Or what type of therapy do we attend? But today, brothers, we're going to give some Quranic remedies and some divine therapy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can cure and solve many of these types of problems that we experience in our daily lives. My dear beloved congregants, be reminded that the Quran and the Sunnah, they provide solutions and cures for all of our individual, all of our societal, and all of our worldly problems. 
whether they are physical, whether they are intellectual, whether they are economical, whether they are spiritual, or whether they are emotional, or even social. So what type of guidance do we find in the glorious Qur'an for those who may be struggling to control their lusts or control their physical desires? What type of remedy does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide in the Qur'an for those who are engrossed in fulfilling the cravings of their stomachs and the cravings of their private parts? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Qur'an that offers us a solution and remedy for those who are wasting hour after hour on the internet in the wee hours of the night looking at things that they shouldn't be looking at such as pornography, such as things and naked women who are wearing no clothes or spending many hours of the day flipping through magazines of women who don't wear the proper garments. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance do in the Qur'an? And what does He guide us to? If we are having and find ourselves having difficulties controlling our physical desires and lusts and staying away from acts of disobedience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفٌ أَضَاعُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَاتَّبَعُوا الشَّهَوَاتَ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّةٌ But there came after them, after them came another generation who neglected their prayers and they started following their desires and they indeed are going to meet evil. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us in this verse, that because people were neglectful of their prayers, people were not praying their prayers, they started to fulfill and pursue their carnal lusts and their physical desires. And Allah informs us in this verse, because people were not praying and following their desires, that they are going to meet an evil destination and result. The people were neglectful in their prayers. They weren't praying on time. They weren't praying with wudu. They weren't praying because they were too occupied with their dunya. So when they didn't have a daily routine and schedule to pray five times a day, they had a lot of free time on their hands and used that time to pursue and fulfill their physical lusts and desires. They lost their connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They lost that communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and opened up the doors to communicate with the shaitan, the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the enemy of human beings. So those of us who find it difficult to control our lusts and physical desires, we need to be reminded that this is exactly what our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was worried about when he addressed his companions and addressed his ummah when he said, إِنَّ مِمَّا أَخْشَى عَلَيْكُمْ شَهَوَاتِ الْغَيْفِ بُتُونِكُمْ وَفُرُوجِكُمْ وَمُدِلَّاتِ الْهَوَى The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Verily, among what I fear for you, for my followers, are the seductive temptations that are in your stomachs and in your private parts and the misguidance of following your desires. So some of us are infatuated with fulfilling the cravings and lusts and desires of the flesh so much that they totally immerse themselves into all of the haram things and they show no care or concern to anything in the religion. When it comes time to pray, they are busy being intimate with their wives until the time for prayer goes out. When it comes time to pay zakat, they are using that money to go on a vacation. When it comes time to fast Ramadan, they sneak a meal or two in the back room when no one is looking. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran about those who have given priority to following their physical lusts and desires over following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments and worshiping Him. And Allah mentions that those who have taken their lusts 
as their gods and giving their lust and physical desires priority over teachings in the Quran and the Sunnah that they have taken their lusts and desires as gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah he says, أَفَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَاهُهُ هَوَاهُ وَأَضَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ وَخَدَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعْلَ عَلَىٰ بَصَرِهِ غِشَاوَةِ فَمَنْ يَهْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Have you seen he who has taken his own desires as his God, as the one that he worships, and Allah has sent him astray due to knowledge, and has set a seal upon his heart and his hearing, and put a seal and blinder over his vision. So who will guide that person after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Will you not all then be reminded, brothers and sisters of Islam? So those who are struggling with the controlling and regulating of their physical desires and lusts, we need to analyze our prayers and how we're performing our prayers. Are we performing them with khushu? Are we focusing and knowing that we're communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we fulfilling the arkan of the prayer, the wajibat of the prayer, the sunan of the prayer? And are we finding peace and tranquility in our prayers? Or are they just a heavy burden that was removed off of our shoulders? Every one of us needs to constantly ask ourselves and do some self-reflection, dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us about the relationship between falling into acts of disobedience with the prayer. That the prayer itself prohibits you and prevents you from falling into evil and bad things. So if you find that you're constantly falling into sin and acts of disobedience and the munkarat and the fawahish, then you need to go back and analyze your prayer. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَلَى الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That indeed the prayer, it prevents you from falling into fawahish, falling into immoral things, wrong things. And indeed, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater. So prayer in itself, my dearly beloved brothers, prevents immorality, prevents sin. Occupying oneself in prayer organizes one's time so that it wasn't wasted. Praying regularly keeps one in constant communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal, our merciful and most loving Lord. So what type of guidance does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide in the Qur'an for those who may be experiencing or feeling a lack of direction in their lives, a lack of success in the endeavors that they pursue, those who are experiencing failure in their lives. Anytime that they try to do something, they find that they're always failing. What should we do? What is the Qur'anic guidance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that anytime we feel a lack of success in our lives, or that we find that we're constantly failing, then we need to analyze our relationships with our parents. We need to analyze our relationships with our mother, our relationship with our father, our relationship with our grandmothers and grandfathers. How many times are we visiting them? How many times a week are we calling them? How dutiful are we being to them? How obedient are we being to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly relates feelings of miserableness, wretchedness, and lack of success with the level and degree of how much one is dutiful to one's parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says about Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam in the Quran, and his relationship with his mother Maryam, when he goes on to say, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلَنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He made me dutiful to my mother. He made me respectful to my mother. He made me give my mother dignity and honor and respect. And He did not make me somebody who was wretched or somebody who was a tyrant. <coughs> And Allah, He mentions in the same surah, Surah Al-Maryam, about Isa one more time, about the relationship between being dutiful to the parents and feeling good in happiness and being undutiful. 
and feeling wretchedness and miserableness. Allah he says about Isa ibn Maryam in the same surah, وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَيْهِ وَلَمْ يَكُمْ جَبَّارٌ عَصِيًّا And Isa alayhi salam, he was dutiful to his parents and he was not a disobedient tyrant. So we understand from these two verses, my dearly beloved brothers, that being dutiful, being respectful, and being obedient to our parents will prevent one, number one, from being disobedient to Allah, and it will prevent us from feeling unsuccessful in our lives. So if we're looking to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then work hard on pleasing your parents. And if you're worried about making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry, then stay away from making your parents angry. As the great companion Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhumah, he said, he said, Rida al-Rabb fi rida al-Walid wa sakhat al-Rabb fi sakhat al-Walid. Abdullah ibn Umar, the great companion, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord, the magnificent creator of everything in existence, earning his pleasure is through earning the pleasure of your parents. And the anger of the Lord, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies in the anger of the parents. So being dutiful to the parents, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, is the best of deeds after establishing the prayer on the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Ayyul amal afdal. He said, Which action is the best? Which deeds are the best? Faqala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as salatu li waqtiha. Prayer at its designated time. Praying on time. Not missing your prayers. Qala thumma, thumma madha. And then Abdullah ibn Mas'ud asked him, what is after the prayer, the most important and the best deeds? He said, being dutiful to your parents. And one time, this same Sahabi, the same companion, Abdullah ibn Umar, he was in Mecca. And he saw a Yemeni man, a man who had traveled from Yemen to Mecca to make Umrah. And he was carrying his mother on his back. So this man, he went up to Abdullah ibn Umar while he was making tawaf and carrying his mother on his back. And he said to Abdullah ibn Umar, he says, Abdullah, do you think that I have repaid my mother for carrying her on my back all the way from Yemen to Mecca? And he said, no, never. Not even for every single groan that you made from the heaviness of her upon your back. So brothers and sisters in Islam, if we're feeling unsuccessful, if we're feeling miserable, or we're feeling a lack of direction in our lives, then we need to go visit our parents. We need to go call our parents. We need to go take them out to eat. We need to bring our mother some flowers and some candy. We need to designate at least one day out of the week only for our parents where we spend time with them and we're dutiful to them and we honor them and we show the dutifulness of those who are honorable children. We also need to make a special supplication for our parents. Designate a part of your prayer after you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah for, to save us from the hellfire and enter us in the paradise make a special supplication for your mother and father. Give charity on their behalf. Build a masjid on behalf of your parents and be reminded, brothers and sisters, that whatever we do, we can never repay our parents back for everything they've done for us. So what about the third group, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters? What about those who may be feeling sad? Those who may be feeling depressed, miserable, or stressed out from everyday life. What is the remedy? What is the medication? What is the solution that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us in the Quran? If we find ourselves feeling depressed, then we need to analyze our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, with Allah's living word, 
with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's noble Qur'an. As Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً دَانْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَامِ And whoever turns away from my remembrance, whoever turns away from my Qur'an, whoever turns away from remembering me in his heart and upon his tongue and upon his limbs, then indeed that person will have a depressed life. That person will have a stressful life. That person will have a miserable life. And then on the day of resurrection, we will gather them and they will all be blind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here, my dearly beloved brothers, that whoever doesn't read or recite Quran, then he's going to feel depressed. Allah is reminding us that whoever only touches the Quran, and takes it off the shelf in the month of Ramadan, that he is going to feel sad and stressed out throughout the remainder of the year. Allah is telling us in this verse that the more we recite Quran, the more we read Quran, the more we ponder over Quran, the more peace, the more tranquility, the more happiness we will find in our lives. Physically, spiritually, mentally, economically, and socially as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in this verse that the less we read Quran and make the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the more we will feel depressed, sad, lonely, abandoned, forgotten, and miserable. So if we want to have inner peace, my dearly beloved brothers, we want to find tranquility in our hearts and our souls and our minds, then we need to recite the Quran. We need to read the Quran. We need to ponder over the meanings of the Qur'an as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبِ Unquestionably, by the remembrance of Allah, hearts find peace and hearts find tranquility. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our hearts with the Qur'an and with Allah's remembrance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us peace, give us tranquility and give us happiness in our lives. Brothers in Islam, these were just some examples of how the Quran provides solutions for some of our daily problems. How the Quran can provide a cure for those who follow their lusts and desires. How the Quran provides a solution for those who felt unsuccessful. And how the Quran provides guidance for those who feel miserable, wretched and sad. It is important, my dearly beloved brothers, that we as Muslims know and understand that the Qur'an and Sunnah provides comprehensive guidance for all of mankind's problems, ills and difficulties, whether they be social, whether they be economic, whether they be mental, whether they be psychological, whether they be physical, or whether they be spiritual. And that there doesn't exist any other guidance on the face of this earth more comprehensive and more stronger than the guidance contained in the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the Quran inna hadha al-Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam wa yubashiru al-mu'mineen al-ladhina ya'maluna al-salihati anna lahum ajran kabiru indeed this Quran guides to that which is the best that which is the most suitable in all affairs of life and gives glad tidings to the believers who do righteous good deeds that they will have a great reward. <laughs> we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran the light of our hearts our souls and our minds. Oh Allah, make, may you re make us realize that the guidance in the Qur'an is the best of the guidance on the face of the earth for all of our problems, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, make it easy for us to practice the Qur'an and Sunnah in our everyday lives and uplift ourselves with it and uplift our communities as well, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Oh Allah, we ask you to bless this community, to send your tranquility and mercy upon all the congregants here today. Raise all of our ranks in this world and the next, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask you to have mercy upon all of our beloved 
brothers and sisters who have passed away, Ya Rabbil Alameen, send your mercy upon them, forgive them of our sins, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and enter them into the highest places in paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower this community with His blessings and grant them goodness and grant them unification upon the Quran and Sunnah. Inna Allahu malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi, ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, the one who sends salah upon him one time, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send salah upon him ten times. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also advised us on Friday that we should frequently send the salah and the salam upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majeed wa aqeemu salah.